Right. Where do we start? So we have to clap. No. Uh, sorry, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how it yeah. works. <laughs> it's only like if we're doing the other audio interface, you clap and oh, you have you? to sync them up and stuff. All right, there we go. Really fun. Okay. So this is episode two of Tricky Talk. It's been a while. It's it been has. a long while. <laughs> But we're going to bring you back a few now. We're going to do this one. I think we're going to do about three today. Yeah. So we'll have one a month for you at least. Yeah. At least. I, was, I was wondering whether to do like one every two weeks or one a month. I don't know yet. Well, I haven't got that many ideas. <laughs> I've only got three ideas so far. So I've got three. So definitely. We'll go for one a month at the minute. And then if we get more, we can slot them in wherever. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. How, how is everyone's Blackpool? You know, comment below or whatever. You know, tell us about your Blackpool because we just got back. Um, so the subject today is probably the one I had. It's buying for yourself. Mm-hmm. What do you think of that? Well, what did you well, first of all? What did you buy? Um, I got Q fifty two and Evoke by yeah. Craig Petty. Also got the uh, Mind Blocks. I got some stuff from Vinny Sugu. Yeah, I got a few bits from him. From yeah. Neo, Neo Magic and some stuff from Cyrus. Yeah. How about you? Um, just. Nothing trick wise. I didn't really get anything trick wise. I got um. What's the word? What am I thinking? Bird. Of? Bird is a word. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, what am I thinking? Of? I got more utilities than anything. I got a couple of tossed out deck routines, uh, mm. four way decks, um, and just things to create sort of bigger things on stage. I'm going for a lot of stage mm. magic at the minute, and I've got. Uh, yeah, I just. What did, I, what did I actually buy? I can't even remember. It was only the other week and I can't remember what I bought. <laughs> but yeah, just sort of things to incorporate in a stage show. I, a lot of things, I had a list and I went through my list. Um, so yeah, I can have a look at the list and then that'll remind me what I've bought, to be fair. But I ended up buying a lot of stuff. I was say, the other one as well, I got a Showcase from Saturn Magic. So oh, that yeah. is so you can produce a playing card from your phone. Oh, right. Can you do it now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, hold out your hand. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Oh my god. And that's the card I was thinking of. <laughs> Everyone name a card. Two of diamonds. Correct. Correct. Yeah, so that's like a nice everyday carry that you can have on yourself. Mm-hmm. That's sort of the stuff that I wanted to buy, as you said, buy magic for yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, <clears throat> there's millions of tricks that people perform there which are amazing. Mm-hmm. You think, oh, that would be great, but whether fits your style or whether you're going to use it is yeah thing. so that this that, that's where my idea came from like buying magic for yourself because like loads of people say after they came back from blackpool and it just sits on the shelves and stuff like that it's like oh what what did i buy that for oh i'm never going to use that yeah but you like it you liked it and you know you bought it because you liked it so just appreciate the fact that you can still show your friends and your family you maybe you're not going to gig with it yeah. Maybe it's not a worker, but like you bought that because you you love that trick. So don't don't feel bad. That's what I, that's the kind of whole roundup of this um, subject. Because I, I mean I've bought six illusions, you know, and they're <laughs> sat in my garage, and I'm yeah. still yet to use them. I've got wakeling sawing. I've got a chair levitation. I've got so much, and I'm I will use them eventually, hopefully. But like I'm happy that I bought them. I love them. I like collecting magic because. Well, I'm a magician. <laughs> we, we like stuff like that. Yeah. So that I that's why I say I say don't don't feel bad that you've that you know you've you've bought something and you're not you're not gonna you ever use it or you don't think you're ever gonna use it because use it on your friends and use it on your family and stuff and then maybe you'll think you know what I can actually put some sort of routine together here I might actually put it in a show or put it in my my work and repertoire or whatever mm-hmm. so you know that's how you get them things off the shelves and actually use them again yeah but it's the same as like if other people are buying it as well don't let it put you off like mm-hmm. we know a lot of people who have and perform Leviosa yes <laughs> yeah it's like a lot of people do it but if you like it and you enjoy it and you want to perform it then yeah like I remember when off. when that came out a lot of people I'd, I wouldn't say it was hyped up because I'd, I'd say it lived up to the hype because it was yeah. a really good trick and I've got one um, and we have a friend what should we say? Chris. Chris, this is yours. Um, he, he does it constantly. He, he swears by it. And honestly, a lot of people were selling it on secondhand magic uh, pages and stuff like that. And they were like, oh, it's thread. I don't know if I'm going to get use out of it. And I'm like, it, it's it's well worth, obviously, putting the time into that. I was saying a lot of people saying, like, they just opened it, tried to use it, and it broke. Yeah. But people saying, obviously, 
it's a utility that you use, so it's going to break over time. But the best thing is, if it breaks when you first get it, then you know how to fix it, so you can fix it. Yeah, it does say watch the watch the video before yeah. you do it. But it it's such a good and the reactions that you get from that. If you actually can, you know, <laughs> fathom out how to use thread and stuff like that, it, it's it's so well worth it. Mm. So well worth it. Like all the videos I've seen of like Chris put on and like yourself and stuff. Yeah. Like reactions are just amazing. Yeah. 100%. I mean, I've got at least two or three videos on my Instagram alone of just doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Chris has about 7,000 something. <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. He does. So what was your what was your favourite buy at Blackpool? Um, I don't know. Like, I got Mind Blocks, mm -hmm. which was a great petty one, and um, performed it for like the week or so. And then I obviously did a review on the channel. But then it was actually performing it, and it was like amazing. So do you know much about it? No, honestly, I didn't really get a chance to. I, I had a walk around the dealers hall, but I literally just went on the Friday, got all my bits off my shopping list, and didn't really watch um, a great deal of Dems mm. um, purely because I wanted to try getting more lectures and stuff like that. Which um, I, I managed to get in most of the ones that I wanted to go see. Yeah. So I, I was doing it for that. You you don't go any lectures, do you? You just go for the dealers hall. Um. This year, I only did Dealers Hall because mm -hmm. I was only there for the one day. But yeah. then last year and the year before, we did quite a lot of lectures. Yeah. Like, um, it was good, but it's it's hard, like, when there's two of them together. There's, like, uh, Jim Tyler and someone else yeah, yeah. on at the same time. So it was, like, trying to yeah, decide trying which to go. It was, like, one. go for half of one, half of the other and stuff. But, yeah, so I got that one. and um, But, no, I never, I, never, I never saw it, no. So it's a, a marked deck with, like, revolving around Lego. Yeah. So we had our mentalism night at Middlesbrough Magic Circle, and mm. I used that one as well, and did it on uh, Nemo. Do you love it? Uh, yeah, he was just like, got to pick a random card. I said you can shuffle them all, do this. He picked it out. It was unicorn. So I did the drawing of like reveal of unicorn. Had him in his head of like building this up, and he was like, wow. And he's like, so could I pick any card? I was like, yeah, could have picked any card at all. But then in there, there's like um, mother of all book tests. And there's some number reveals and stuff like that. All right, you're so gonna have to show me after this. Been having a mess around. I was like, really impressed with it. And it's only twenty six cards, uh, so it's like easy to carry around. And you're, it's, gonna, you're gonna have to show me after this. You will have to show me. And obviously, I thought with that, <clears throat> with doing the weddings when you got the kids and stuff like that, it's like, yeah, you need everyone knows like Lego. That. Yeah, they do. So yeah, I think that need... was that was my favorite. That was your favorite thing. Uh, awesome. My favorite thing was probably something that I bought. Before Blackpool, actually. Um, as I say, I've been wanting to do a lot of stage stuff recently, parlour stuff. So I've just been getting ideas from watching shows and what have you. And I saw a staple gun roulette trick. <laughs> it's nothing new, but um, I thought, oh, I'm going to have a look for one of them at Blackpool or something along them lines. Mm. And um, I found a DVD uh, called Risk. Right. Uh, watched the DVD. And then all it was is I had to go buy these certain staplers and I bought mm. all of them and now I shoot myself with staplers <laughs> and it's really good. That's my favourite thing that I bought, not at Blackpool, but probably at Blackpool. The best thing I did buy though mm. was at the, at the top level uh, in the ballroom, there was this stand that was just selling just a lot of random <laughs> rubbish and there was a rubber glass. I remember you showed us that one. And I, I just said, I just walk around people, oh, hold on to that, and just dropping it. And it looked so good. It looked like that was probably the best thing that I bought, to be fair. Um, but I, I've also created uh, another routine because I went up and I bought about five more. Mm. Um, and it's uh, it's a smash and stab routine yeah. with, with glass. Mm. Uh, so, you know, if you know, you know. <laughs> but then the same with that, it's like, buying tricks for yourself to suit your style and preferences mm -hmm. so obviously with me doing like the fire and i love yeah random stuff like that yeah so got world's most dangerous card trick yeah yeah with the uh the bear hook bear trap whatever yeah. you call it and hook hook oh yes yeah hook so i got that, that i haven't got it out of the box yet but i was like i want a dangerous one isn't it yeah it's a really risky one that was on uh britain's got talent a few Years ago, wasn't it? By, yeah. Uh, I think, is it Eric Ross? I yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, but also on my uh, on my list, as I say, I've been, I didn't, I didn't go with anything in mind, just with like things that I wanted. You know, like I wanted a straight jacket. <laughs> Don't know why, but I, I want getting, one as well. So you want one? We're about the same size. So I'll I'll, I'll give you mine. I'll give you mine. 
Um, definitely on my list that I wanted was um, Royal Couple. Mm-hmm. It's like an anniversary waltz, but the, the, the cards the are card actually holding hands. Yeah. yeah, It's a great thing for weddings. Mm. Great thing for weddings. Uh, other than that, I wanted uh, An Out of This World Hands Off by Magic Box. Um, just, as I say, little utilities. I wanted blank decks. I wanted a coin flip uh, flipper. Just little things like that. There wasn't anything that I was really going for in particular other than those things just on my list, yeah. which I needed. Um, and if I saw something that wowed me, then yeah, I'd have probably bought that as well. But I didn't. I didn't. Not that I didn't see anything that wowed me. I probably did, but I can't remember because it's probably still at home <laughs> in a box um, that I need to get out. But yeah, the, going back to saying buying stuff for yourself, like I, obviously I just said there that everything is just shoved in a box now. Mm. It'll be in that box for a while. I'm not going to lie, but I'm not upset about it. I'm not upset that I've just bought all that and or wasted money on it and I'm never going to use it. Yeah. Because, like, this year I saw it, I liked it, and I will perform it, whether it be working in weddings, restaurants, anything like that, or whether it just be to my friends and family and stuff like that. You know? Mm. What else? I don't know. It's just trying to, like... Trying to elaborate on this subject. That try, trying came. to think of... Probably. If you get some spare time just to sort of sift through stuff you've got and see yeah. if you can bring it out and start to use it. Like, I've started to try and bring out a lot of the stuff that I've got because it's like load everywhere mm-hmm. and try and have a mess around with it, watch tutorials, and then possibly do a review. Because when I'm doing the review, I'm going to try and do some live performances. So mm-hmm. I'm going to have to perform it a couple of times. And then if it's something that I enjoy, suits my style, then I'll probably just keep it. If not, I'll just get rid of it. Yeah. Just to try and get, well, get rid of get it all you set stuff. or just give it away. Like get rid of it. You get get rid of it all together. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't <laughs> I, that's that's where I don't agree with this. I have so much magic in my house that I don't <laughs> perform, but I collect it. As I say, six illusions. Mm. I don't know what I'm doing with them. Do you know what I mean? Don't know what I'm doing with them. But we'll have to do a video one day and we'll just do all the illusions. Just you know what? Yeah, on. let's do a That'd podcast on the illusions. We'll set them all up. <laughs> we'll have to get Paige. Paige yeah. to do them because Paige is, on, Paige is my girlfriend, by the way. Uh, Paige uh, can actually now do, I think it's, is it four or five out of the six that I've bought? Yeah. Yeah, she can't do the work and sawing yet, but we're in the process <laughs> of that. Um, but yeah, she's just been able to do the uh, cube, the mini cube zag mm-hmm. at the minute. And uh, it's, it's so great. <laughs> As I say, we've only ever done that for a few people. We've done it for her mum and dad yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but as I say, I'm not upset that I haven't, I'm not using it yet because we will eventually use it. But as I say, I'm not upset that I've spent loads of money on it because, as I say, I, I collect magic. I love to have it there. You know, mm. one day I'd love to have a huge, huge house and a room just full of illusions. Yeah. It's just something <laughs> I'd like to have, whether I use them or not. A, you know, so you've got a room so you can go in and look at them and say, it's good. It's well, good. some of them, good. <laughs> one of them, um, I mean, it's this huge box that I got from Chris. Uh, crisscross it's this uh, snake girl illusion mm-hmm. where the girl goes inside and you you stab loads of these uh, wooden spikes through and um is that the one when i came to yours last and you had the looks like crickets yeah like cricket bats. Yeah. yeah 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 and uh do you know a piece of furniture from barker and Stonehouse <laughs> would cost you more than i paid for that thing and it's it's phenomenal it looks like a piece of furniture in your house you could put shelves in that yeah. And it would be a great bookcase, but it's an illusion as well. <laughs> but yeah, I'd love to have a little house of illusions. But then you just need like your illusion room and then a secret door to get you in as well. Yes, like a bookcase <laughs> or something. Or the front of the snake girl illusion just opens and then you're in there. Oh, that's how it or works. Tiny little door. So you have to crawl room through. <laughs> oh, what else? I don't really know. I don't really know. I had this idea for this. Uh, this podcast, and now I've just basically blurted it all out. I don't really know how to make this last an hour now, to be fair. So, yeah, well, it doesn't have to last an hour, really. It doesn't have to last no. an hour. Maybe 45 minutes this one. How long yeah. have we been going so far? It's not that I'm bored of you, sir, anything. I don't know. Does it say how long? Yeah. Who knows? Not 45 minutes yet, though. Not 45 minutes, so we need to talk about <laughs> something else. We talked about Blackpool. Oh, well, let's talk about next year's Blackpool then. Mm. Um, so, you're going to go for the whole three days next year? Hopefully, yeah. And what, what, because obviously you only go, well, last year, or this year even, you only went around the dealer's hall, mm-hmm. um, and the year before that, you, you obviously only go for, to do the video, mainly, mm-hmm. but next year are you going to try to do a dealer's hall video one day, well, and then what? Yeah, ideally it's like, 
trying to get that done in one day so that's over and done with. Mm-hmm. And then have you thought about any other video stuff? ideas for like the two other days? You know, maybe yeah. one just on gala shows, maybe one just on the lectures. I did, but it's like you're not allowed to you're not allowed to film in the gala show. No, 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 yeah. So I could do like a review thing, but mm-hmm. without footage and stuff is a bit pointless. Lectures possibly. But I did think of some other things of like I want to go and get some magicians and take photos. Yeah. So like have a video set up on the chess mount mm-hmm. and say to the magicians, Oh, do you want some pictures? And then show the process behind that. Because obviously we're really doing the photography idea. stuff. That was quite good. And then I thought of an idea of asking ten or fifteen magicians ten or fifteen questions. Okay. So you ask the same questions to ten magicians yeah, yeah. like if you were stuck on Desert Island and you could take three tricks, what would you have? That sort of thing. Who would you perform if, it for though? Well, someone else who's on Desert Island. Someone else with you. <laughs> and then, like, if you could only use one trick for the rest of your life, what would you use? Leviosa. Leviosa. Because it'd be interesting to get different people's perspective. Like, some people who do mentalism. Yeah. Some people who are, I don't know, wedding magicians. Yeah. So you'd be like, what do you use? Double cross. Yeah. That would be it. Yeah, just double cross <laughs> forever and ever and ever. Like, I thought about something like that, maybe. And then, I don't know, what else? Um, why don't I just had this idea? Why don't you just do a video purely on the Ruskin? Because that yeah. is a ho- that is a massive part of the convention, the Ruskin. Yeah, like so. You, all the other times I've been, it's just like, do you go the en- Ruskin? Enjoying it. Yeah. Do you go the Ruskin? Yeah. Yeah. It's you go. You can go hard in the Ruskin. I mean, I I'd rather stay upstairs and downstairs. Downstairs is a bit smelly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone's jamming downstairs. Yeah, I'd rather stay upstairs as well. I mean, that's what I did. I mean, on the Thursday we went, I didn't get home till like, oh, we'll get back to the hotel till like three or something. And then you, it's, it's every night, it's every single night you don't get back to the hotel yeah. till three. And then you're up at nine to do the convention again or something like that. Or even up even earlier if you want breakfast. I know that last year there was, um, we were in the, the Ruskin and Don Nivelle was there. Mm-hmm. And there was, I think it was, I don't know if it was Ollie Meal and, and someone else, and they were doing like this thing for like twenty minutes. So they, <laughs> they had a sharpie and had a coin, and they both kept like one would make the sharpie disappear, and the other one would be like pluck it out of the air. <laughs> and Don, Don was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And it kept going for twenty minutes, and they're like, <laughs> and I, I love Don that. was like, He's so "What? Great. What? What?" <laughs> <laughs> we just stood there laughing at these two and just like. Vanishing a sharpie, and, like pull it out and like find a different ways to do that. It was just, it was class. <laughs> if you don't know Don, <laughs> we we actually um, we actually had him up at the Middlesbrough Circle. And we just hosted him for a few <laughs> days. We he just came up as a friend, um, and we we took him out. And you see all these videos that he puts online <laughs> and about about um, you know he's, he's performing to people and these amazing <laughs> reactions. And you look and you think. What's he doing? <laughs> what is he doing to get those amazing reactions? And we did a couple of videos with him. And honestly, we were giving him the same reaction. He is the one of the most cleverest men I have ever, ever met. Like, what he's doing is real magic. You met him, right? Yeah. And did he do anything for you when you saw him? No. Because we... I think he was up at Middlesbrough. And then it was like the Saturday or something. You had gone to Whitby. And yeah, then we would gone to Whitby you? to camp. In the van, and we bumped in, yeah. In the so graveyard, I was coming over the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, There's Don Novell, what's he doing here? I was like, Oh, there's Matt, that's okay. And I was like, Oh, yeah, shit, he's come up to stay in the middle of the <laughs> But honestly, when we took him out to Whitby, it was it was some experience because obviously Don loves a video, yeah. So we videoed him a couple of times because we told was, him that something about a song, yeah, you know, holding like back the years by Simply Red. <laughs> so it was recorded in Whitby, and he was like, "We need to get a video now." So <laughs> N- Neil was playing the song in the in the Ford, and I was holding the Ford, and he was just like, "Did you know that in that window just up there, make up no performed, holding back the years?" And it was phenomenal. But the best thing was, we took him into a coffee shop, and we just said, "Oh, do you want a coffee, Don?" Mm. Yeah, just a cappuccino, please. I'll oh, buy a crisp if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And he's quiet, right? We go get it. We order it. We come sit back down. He has got the whole <laughs> coffee shop stood up. He's like, right, that's me. I'm Don Novell. But these guys are phenomenal magicians. He's getting us to perform at every single moment we could. And it, it's funny. You've got to be on your toes with him because he's, he's going to do that every single chance he gets. But it was the same when I saw you at Whitby. 
and there was a group of people there, and he was like, "This guy here, this is Matt. He's an amazing musician. <laughs> Do some tricks." I know. And you were like, "What?" I know. Are these people just on holiday or something like that, just yeah. having a little walk about. And then so you're like, I "Get Pavel out." And I was just like, "Yeah, I'll do a few. Why not?" But every chance he gets, he gets you to perform. But as I say, he's he's one of the most like smartest men I've ever ever seen because he does a lot of mentalism mm -hmm. and he'll tell you to think of the year you're born he doesn't know the year you're born or he just gets you to think of a year and he can literally whip out Christmas number ones James mm -hmm. Bond films FA Cup finals winners, losers goal scorers man of the matches yeah. um, what else can he do F1 snooker he just I don't want to reveal how he does it but I'll just be honest he's, he's really clever <laughs> um, so he may just know it all yeah. he may but it's it's phenomenal because he can literally whip them out like that. And I'm like, what you're doing is real magic, Don. And I'm like, I asked him, I said, have you ever thought about being a chaser? <laughs> Just honestly, be a chaser because you, you're going you're gonna to make so much money doing that. Why not? Yeah. But yeah. Do you know what? Let's get him on this podcast one day. Yeah. Don, if you're watching, which you will be... Um, <laughs> You're going to be he's on this podcast. We're going to force him to. He's got, you know, I'm going to make him watch this. Well, isn't he coming back up to Middlesbrough soon? We'll definitely have him back because he's just he's such he's so fun. He's so mm. fun to be around, and I'm going to. I think we're going to invite him. Well, I'm going to invite him next chance we get. Maybe I don't know what for. Didn't he take him out clubbing? <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> took him out. To club, yeah. <laughs> so I, I work in a, one of the nightclubs in Middlesbrough. Every other Saturday, and it was it was that weekend. He was up. I said, "Don, I've I've got a gig tonight, so I'll come out with you, but I'm not drinking too much because I've got a gig later on. Um, so I'll have a, I'll have a pint or two with you." He said, "Yeah, yeah, no worries." And then I go, well, "Actually, do you want to just do you want to just come to work with me?" <laughs> and then him and Chris were just in the lounge while I was working. Yeah. I'd finished work, and then he was like, "Right." I go, and he gets up and he starts performing with everyone. I'm just like, just, just give it a rest, just have a nice drink or something, just have a sit down. But it was, yeah, he's uh, I don't know how old Don is. He's like, he's too old to go in a club, and you know, you should know that, Don. Uh, but no, we had he's, he's I such don't know, a pie but, animal. I don't want to be it. harsh to him, but I'm guessing about 50 ish, possibly. There you go, Don. You can, add, you can confirm, or deny. <laughs> I don't know how old he is, to be fair. But uh, I don't, I don't he looks great for his age. Yeah, I don't know if that's like too harsh. He might be a lot younger, like <laughs> my age, or he might be a lot older and it's really nice. So, well, you just had a rough paper. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but uh, I'm definitely going to get him back up to Middlesbrough because he, he was just, he's such a lively character. I'm going to get him to come to one of the meetings as well. Mm. Um, whether it be a lecture or just a night, because should he... get him along when we're doing the photograph. It's like him in the photo. <laughs> He'd love it. He'd love it. We should have got him up on a mentalism night. Yeah. Jesus, he's he's so so good at that. So good. What about you for Blackpool next year? Do you have a list that you're already Not... writing for it? Or I think I added something to my list the other day. To be fair, did I add something? So there's a lot of stuff that comes out of Blackpool. So sometimes you can't think oh, I'm going to get this because it's only released then. Yeah. Uh, nothing, nothing yet. Um, actually, I did have one thing that I wanted that I saw at Blackpool, but I just thought I need to think of an idea to have with it before I buy it. But it's, um, do you know the PK Touch sort of things? Mm. And uh, I saw the chairs and yeah. I saw little devices that can help you. Um, I do it with, with nothing. Like I can mm. do it with um, with no gimmicks. But I thought I saw this, saw this um, stand and it... It was a few hundred pounds for this gimmick, and I just thought mm. I need to think of an idea before I commit to buying that. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing on my list so far. I don't really have anything else, as I say. I'll probably wait until like new tricks come out through the year, mm. and if I watch them, I like them, I get them, or if I think of any new ideas, yeah, I'll definitely put them on my list for next year. But I did quite a lot of shopping this year, like a <laughs> hell of a lot of shopping. Because I, I, must, I must have a boat. 10 hours worth of a show now to put, yeah. to, build, to put in. A lot of my stuff was trying to research stuff prior to think, I want that. Mm -hmm. Like, that's something I'm going to get. Because, like, when we were going around and Rara was like, that's good, you should get that. It's like, yeah, I wouldn't perform it. It's not my style. Well, you know, that's why I used to, I used to take Paige to Blackpool. She, uh, she doesn't come now. <laughs> uh, but she only ever used to go at the show. She didn't really, wasn't really interested in the lectures. But I used to take her around the dealer's hall and if it filled page, like that's when I'd buy it. Yeah. Because that she's a, obviously she's a, someone that doesn't do magic. Mm -hmm. So if 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 she liked it, 
then it would be a worker. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Rather than if I if I, like I could watch it and I could go, mm, yeah, it's all right. Or wow, it's amazing. If it's amazing, it's probably too much yeah. for uh, someone that doesn't do <clears> magic. But if if I like thought, mm, okay, maybe it's something that would be good for someone that doesn't doesn't do magic and it would get the best reaction. Yeah. So that's why I took her around with me because she has no idea about magic. So <laughs> if it fills her, I bought it. Yeah. But yeah, like the past few years she hasn't been coming because as I say, she only used to ever just come to the shows anyway. Yeah. Um so she just used to stay in the hotel until then <laughs> or have a little walk around, go buy a stick of rock out of something like that. <laughs> and what about like the subject thing, buy magic for yourself? What about like decks of cards? Yeah, so like just bulk up normal ones bulk to bag. collect or in terms of like Don't perform gimmick cards and stuff like what? Um so four things. Don't bu- bulk buy bicycle cards. Just bulk <laughs> buy red and blue uh bicycle cards. Um collectible cards, don't perform with them unless you've got loads of money. And because they're like what 10 15 pound a deck sometimes, mm. if you want, sometimes I, I more. sometimes more. I think the most expensive, I can't remember the most expensive one I paid, maybe like 50 quid or something like that. So but again, first one or something, it was actually, like, <laughs> it might have been. I got it in a big bundle. Um, but I I collect cards as well, uh, not just obviously magic tricks and various things like that. Mm. I collect playing cards, um, and uncut sheets and stuff like that. G- gimmick cards, yeah. So that's a thing to go back to when you're performing at a wedding. Just have a few. Like mm-hmm. I, I have two. I have um, one in one in each pocket, a gaffed deck, mm-hmm. um, to do two separate tricks. If you're going just doing card tricks and you need about twenty gaff decks, don't you? Because one <laughs> might just do one trick. Yeah. One might just do another. So, yeah, they're they're a good investment. So some invisible deck, it's mm. that's a true worker. And it doesn't cost that much, so yeah, buy a few of them. Mm. But what what about you? What do you what are your thoughts on buying playing cards and stuff like that? I don't know. Like there's the whole debate of like a stripper deck. Magicians are like, well, shouldn't use a stripper deck because of this. Mm-hmm. But then some of the things you can perform using that is really easy. Mm-hmm. And then we were saying earlier, like one of the most popular videos on the channel is tricks with a stripper deck. Mm-hmm. And then when I started magic, that's what I got and was learning with. I don't really use one now, apart from the odd thing, but it's like, yeah, it's quite interesting because people are like frowned upon with it. It's like, don't use that. You should never use that. But, really? Yeah. I've never heard that before, but yeah. that's news to like me. Like saying, oh, well, if you want to do like a four race production, you should learn how to do it with a normal deck of cards so you can perform it anywhere with anything, which is understandable. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes... Sometimes the easy. easier thing looks... Looks better, I think. Yeah. The same with like mark decks and stuff. Yeah. Well, if you can do a four ace production with a normal deck, you're really good with cards. And then, mm. to be honest, personally, if I can't do a trick within five minutes, I don't <laughs> want to do it normally. I don't want to do it. Um, no, see, that's that's just working towards your own. Is it self gratification doing yeah. stuff like that? Um, but to a to a someone that doesn't do magic, mm. just using a stripper deck or a normal deck, they're going to think that's a normal deck. Mm-hmm. So why do, what does it matter? Uh, what does it matter whether you use a normal deck or a stripper deck if you're achieving the same outcome? Yeah. Performing to magicians, on the other hand, yeah, using a stripper deck might be a bit like cheating. You know, if so you want to try to show off... They might not think that people use them, so... Do you know I, I filled <laughs> I filled someone with a, a stripper deck. I can't remember the trick that I did, uh, but I used a stripper deck, and it fooled one of my, the, my magician friends. Mm. And uh, when I told him it was a stripper deck, he's just like, oh, well, well I'm just to that. That's, oh, why, are you do, why are you doing that? Oh, obviously, it's like that. But yeah, I don't know what else to say on stripper decks, to be fair. I don't use them, to be fair. Oh, I'll tell I do. I, I use it in one trick. But I can't tell you the trick because that would reveal the method. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I use. I do actually use I'm a stripper that's deck. that's one. Last time I was at yours, I was asking about it because I've got it as well. Maybe, yeah. Don't say anything anymore because we'll, re- we'll tell you a trick. If you, you can't even say if you know, you know, because really, you don't know. I have a clue what I'm talking about. You just don't know I'm talking about stripper decks. But uh, that, that, yeah. So yeah, I do use a stripper deck in my routine. I don't often do it. Mm-hmm. I'd probably do that for more parlor or or something like that. I wouldn't carry it round with me. The thing with that, like stage and parlor, you could do it blindfolded. Yeah. So yeah, you could do it blindfolded, which makes it more impressive mm-hmm. to lay people thinking. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, even, to be fair, 
the trick that I do with the stripper deck, if you did it the way that it's presented with a normal deck, you're not doing it with a normal deck. I'm sorry, yeah. you're just not. <laughs> um, so you have to use it with a stripper deck. But it looks, it looks hella good. Mm -hmm. It looks so, so good when you use it. What other trick decks is there? Or is the invisible deck? Svengali. Svengali, yeah. Do you know when we were in Blackpool, actually, we went in this pub and this this kid that was in there, his mm -hmm. mama owned the pub, he had a, a deck of cards and we were like, do you do magic? And he's just like, oh, I do a few tricks. And he started showing us some stuff. Yeah. And I was just like, why are a lot of your cards like the ten of hearts? <laughs> and I realised he had a, he, he didn't realise what it was. Yeah. I said, do you realise that's a, special deck of cards that you can do this with. Yeah. And he said, no, no. <laughs> so I, I taught the, I taught this kid what a what a Svengali deck was, mm. and he didn't have a clue. He just thought yeah. that was a normal deck of cards. I'm like... With just multiple cards. With the multiple same. of the same <laughs> cards, yeah. Because I, I picked the Ten of Hearts and he did. And then he, was, uh, he said, yeah, is that your card? And I said, yeah, yeah, good good trick. And then he showed me the deck and I was just like, oh, it's a Svengali deck. And he went, a what? <laughs> I went, then I told him what it was and I, I showed him how it worked and he was just like, Oh my god, and he was just like, I have to go show his mum and his brother and everything. It was so good. It was so good. I'm trying to think. Like, obviously, there's the Mark Deck stuff. Mark Decks. So, like, Night Flight, DMCs. Yeah. Which ones do you use? Night Flight. Yeah. If I'm using it, uh, I like the Night Flight ones. They, they just made the Night Flight Pros, haven't they? Or something mm -hmm. where it's like plastic and. Yeah, so. That'd be so good in the club. The first ones I saw was the V2, I think. It right. was Andy Lamarth had them. Yeah, yeah. And they're the plastic ones of, like, the older version. And then he was doing something. He was like, oh, I use this for, like, prediction or whatever because it's marked and you can't see it. And I was mm -hmm. looking, I was like, can't see it. Sure does. And obviously from there you know. I was like, that's meant that. Mm. I Especially use the... Um, I don't use a lot of Mark deck stuff. Um, just It just doesn't... It's not in my routine. Mm. But... Um, I use the DMC ones because I think they have some of the best markings on. They're expensive cards, though. Yeah. They are, what are they? £18 a deck? I think that's how, how much I, I paid think, when um, I bought them last. I think I got them for about 15 Yeah. So I got some from Magic Box last oh, year yeah, Blackpool. Yeah. yeah. They are, they, they've got really good markings on them. Yeah. And they're, they're really, like... And the same, like, you can have them far away and you can see them. Yeah. And they're really, like, quite nice to handle. And they just look smart as well. Mm. Like, bicycles, like... Everyone knows what bicycle cards are, especially yeah. in America and stuff like that. They all know what a bicycle ca uh, cards are like, but these just look very smart as well. Yeah. What um, other decks have we got? I'm trying to think what I carry. I wouldn't say it's. Uh, I do celebrity smarts, right? Um, up close, and I wouldn't say that's a. Well, yeah, that is a gaff deck, isn't it? Mm. And I, I, that's what I say. So I carry two decks. That's in one pocket, and I carry around a piece of paper, well, an envelope with a question mark, and that's the the reveal. Yes. And I carry an invisible deck in, in this pocket, and that's purely all I carry. I don't really use a lot of gaff decks, just them two, because mm -hmm. I don't want to have tons and tons yeah. around me. Like I, I know there's some great tricks out there with them, but if you haven't to carry around four, five, <laughs> six decks just to do four, five, six tricks. Yeah. Then the people are gonna go. Why are you? Why are you going for another deck of cards? Why can't you just do it with the same deck of cards? So, I suppose if there's like some natural thing of like, I don't know. Say for example, trying to get the night flight deck. It's like, oh, we're gonna use these push cards for this. Like, there's some justification that you're gonna to have to use to use that deck. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd use that all the time. Yeah. Or if you could separate them between tricks, you know, don't just do card trick after card trick after mm -hmm. card trick. If you're gonna do a trick deck, use a trick deck, then go into something else um, that's not a card trick, and then you know can give you a reason to go back in your pocket and pull yeah. out, pull it out. If you've got several trick decks, make sure they all look very similar, and then people won't have that suspicion that you'll um, that you'll. It's like oh, it's, it's, it's the same. He's just using a red deck. Now he's got a blue deck. Yeah, it's like what? Well, <laughs> why do you have a blue deck now and a red deck? It's like, okay, magic. Now I made it change color. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, well. Any uh, final thoughts on buying shit for yourself? Don't bankrupt yourself because <laughs> magic's expensive. Uh, no, don't, don't be mad when you don't use what you've bought because you'll either eventually use it or just appreciate that you've bought it because you like it. Um, or stuff of like... 
if you're not at a particular level, like for me, like a lot of the stuff from Neo Magic when they came to Middlesbrough, yeah, like we bought the pack thing, and someone's like Elmsy counts, whereas yeah, I'm yeah. not as good with them. Yeah. So I'm like, that's a mint trick, but then I can't perform it yet. Yeah. So. So don't get disgruntled if the method and tutorial isn't something that you know and you have to learn and put the effort in. Yeah. Because I know I did say if I can't do a trick in five minutes, I don't do it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just don't, yeah. If it just sits in the bottom of a drawer, get it out sometimes and just perform it. Or just have a little, you, just, you might just think back and think, oh, you know what, I got that because I loved the effect. I'm going to take five minutes today and learn that. Mm. Um, and if you've bought things and you just sit there, just do it for your friends, do it for your family, take it down the pub, take it to your magic club or whatever and just try it on them. And then, then it might give you some pointers of how to do it easier or, you know, it might give you a better routine to deal with it. And yeah, you might, you never know, you might put it in your routine, you might do something with it, mm. you might just stick it back in your drawer, but don't like, don't be pissed off that it's there <laughs> because you bought it because you love it. Um, the same, like if there's a trick and it's not, using a specific method you could use that for something else yeah like you don't have to follow the exact same method as what someone else is using it yeah 100 percent. so make it to yourself because you bought it for yourself yeah absolutely this has been a short one hasn't it feels a bit short but we've got three recorded today so we've got to get through these <laughs> but thanks yeah. for watching or listening wherever you are yeah find us on uh, youtube apple spotify all the other streaming platforms you do all that. I don't know what we're yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the tech behind this. Yeah, so we'll leave it at that. See you all soon. Until next time. See ya. Bye.